Hey everyone, today I'm talking about something that I wish someone would have given me some guidance on some years ago when I started out with a home lab. Stop exposing your home lab directly to the internet. I learned the hard way many moons ago that with a Windows 10 box that even though I had hardened it, even though I had firewall rules, I thought protecting it, it got hacked despite my best efforts. So in this video, I'm going to show you four modern, secure, and remote access solutions, including four that I have tested personally, and giving you my thoughts and opinions on each. All of these will allow you to keep your home lab safe and still reach your services from anywhere on the internet. No open ports required. So stick around and let's dive right in. And now a word about the sponsor of today's video. Today's video is sponsored by Nakivo. Are you looking for a powerful and reliable backup solution for your home lab or enterprise environment? Look no further than Nakivo Backup and Replication. Nakivo is an excellent data protection software that offers comprehensive backup and recovery options and lets you use your NAS or a simple VM deployment as a backup appliance. Nakivo supports a wide range of environments, including Proxmox VE, VMware, Hyper-V, Nutanix, KVM, and EC2 instances, along with SaaS platforms like Microsoft 365. Plus, they offer a free version for up to 10 VMs, and that makes it an ideal choice for both home lab setups and enterprise backups. The first solution is TwinGate. TwinGate sits somewhere between a VPN and a proxy service, and it brings zero trust segmentation, enterprise connectors, split tunneling, and even conditional access policies even on a free plan for up to five users, and no firewall holes are needed. The on-prem connector initiates the tunnel outbound, so you have granular access controls and you can limit services by user or by device. It's super easy to deploy. You simply run the connector in a Docker container, on a virtual machine, on a Raspberry Pi, or even on a Synology NAS device. And it works with dynamic IPs, CG NAT, and other network complexities. Let's see how you can easily stand this up and use TwinGate to protect your home lab network. I wanted to show you the Docker Compose code that you can easily use to get up and running with TwinGate. And the awesome thing about TwinGate is you can run this in a full virtual machine, or you can run this as a container. And I love the containerized aspect of TwinGate as this gives you many, many options. You could run this on a Raspberry Pi. You could run this on one of your Docker container hosts. You could run this in a Docker Swarm cluster. You can run this in a Kubernetes cluster. And something cool that I'm doing is I'm running this in my Synology NAS. And that gives you options to get your remote access outside of your other home lab equipment. So I like to run two connectors in my home lab environment. One is inside my quote unquote production home lab environment and the other sits in the Synology NAS, which the Synology NAS is the LAN in the CAN device that doesn't really have to have any of the resources found in the home lab environment proper, running on the mini PCs and storage and what have you there. So then the Synology NAS, if everything else breaks, then you've still got a way to at least get into that network if you're remote and unable to get into your network if the other connector is down. Just a little bit of architecture there that I like to set things up in that way in the home lab. And this is similar to what you would do in production. You don't want to have a single point of failure. But the Docker Compose is fairly straightforward. When you go and provision a new connector in your TwinGate environment and your cloud dashboard, you're going to get several pieces of information that you're going to plug in here. You're going to get your network name, your access token, your refresh token, and just a couple other uh, environment variables that we're using there as well. So once you plug those values in, that makes this connector connected to your TwinGate environment. And then, of course, you simply just save this and then run your docker compose up dash D command to bring this container up. And once you do, it will register 
in your TwinGate environment in your cloud dashboard. And you're going to see that the connector is connected. And at that point, you can start setting up your resources, your uh, access rules, deny rules, allow rules, those types of things to really set up that zero trust environment that something like TwinGate allows you to create. Next on the list is TailScale. Now, TailScale is a mesh VPN built on the WireGuard VPN protocol. You install the agent, sign in, and every device on your network gets a 100.x.x.x IP address. No port forwarding is required. It works behind any NAT or even double NAT configurations. It supports ACLs, Magic DNS, and subnet routers. It's free for up to 100 devices. I've used TailScale to connect my laptop, phone, and home servers seamlessly. It provides rock solid performance thanks to WireGuard. But the trade off is that all devices must run TailScale to talk to each other. Let's dive a little bit deeper into the configuration of TailScale and how you can set this up. So on the TailScale website, you just simply go to the Get Started, it's free button. It's going to have you log in with one of the online identity providers. So once you sign in and get your account established, you're going to just simply add your first device by downloading the agent for the device that you want to install it on. So I'm just going to choose Windows and then download TailScale for Windows. And we're simply just going to install the TailScale agent. We're going to agree to the EULA install. So now the agent's installed, we just click the get started, sign into your network. So now what we need to do is simply add a second device. So it notes that we've got the Win11 ADM device that has been connected. So now it basically just says, hey, install the next device to your network. And you can see where we're going with this. You get a nice visual of the agents that you have running and those devices that you have that's connected to your network will be able to connect to one another. So if you're needing to connect to those resources, all of those agents that are on the TailScale network will essentially be connected. Now, if you want total control over the solution, not relying on anyone else, you can go with plain WireGuard. WireGuard is free, it's open source, and it's blazing fast. As you can see, many of the other solutions are built on it in the background, and it has a tiny footprint. You handle with your own WireGuard installation, your own keys and configs. No cloud dependencies are required. You can do point to site, site to site. You can even have roaming VPN with static peers, zero cloud lock-in, and that will make many out there very happy. You can also check out projects such as WGEZ if you want a web UI for WireGuard and Docker. And I, this is something I've written about. I've got a blog post on this subject a couple of years back, and I will link to that in the show notes. Otherwise, you can install it on a Linux virtual machine, point to your ports, and you're good to go. Last but not least, if you want to expose a web service publicly, but in a secure way, try Cloudflare Tunnel. With this, you run a lightweight agent in your network, and it opens an outbound WebSocket over HTTPS connection directly to Cloudflare, much like TwinGate does with its egress connection. This requires no open ports or NAT setup, and it has the very famous Cloudflare DDoS protection. Also, you get automatic SSL via Let's Encrypt, access rules with Cloudflare Access, and identity provider integration. But it's not just for web services. You can expose things like Gati, Grafana, SSH, RDP, really anything that most would want to host. And it's safer than punching holes in your firewall. But remember, you're still opening a public URL just behind Cloudflare's proxy. So it's worlds more secure than trying to host that web server behind your own firewall but still do keep that in mind. Well, punching holes in your firewall might get you quick access, but let me tell you, it's a security nightmare. These four modern solutions give you secure, flexible access to your home lab without exposing your services to the entire internet. Which one are you using today? Are you using any of the solutions that we mentioned? Are you thinking about changing your architecture on how you access your home lab? Well, drop me a comment below and let me know what solution you're using or are thinking about using. If you found this video helpful, give the video a thumbs up, 
subscribe to the channel and ring that bell so you don't miss any home lab tips and future episodes. Well, do stay safe out there, keep on home labbing, and I will see you in the next video.